Hey everyone, Zach Albetta here for OnlineDrummer.com. I've been asked by a few of the forum members to uh, put on a video here talking a little bit about uh, basic concepts using the brushes. Um, before we get into any technical aspects about actually playing, um, I want to talk a little bit about which brushes to buy because if you go into pretty much any music store, you're going to have a quite a big selection to choose from. Uh, the you know the the big manufacturers, uh, Vic Firth and Promark and Regal Tip all have uh, stock models and signature models. The, the model that I'm using that I've been liking recently is the Vic Firth Steve Gadd signature model. Uh, it's a retractable brush with uh, rubber handles and it has flared ends on the ends of the wire uh, which give you more contact surface or surface contact on the head and it also prevents the ends of the wires from getting stuck in the texture of the head. Uh, the other uh, signature models that I've played and liked are all by Regal Tip. Uh, the first one is the Jeff Hamilton signature model. It's also a retractable brush and the wires on that brush are, are quite a bit stiffer so you'll get a, a fatter sound out of those brushes. Um, if you listen to Jeff Hamilton play it's, it's really evident that he's playing with a stiffer wire. The Ed Thigpen signature model is cool because it has a pretty soft brush. It's a little more legato sound and the butt end of it is, is wood. It's kind of a hollow piece of wood on the end, so you can still get a good drum sound or a good rim shot sound if you want to turn the brush around. Uh, the third one is the Clayton Cameron signature model by Regal Tip, and rather than a wood end on it, it has kind of a yellow nylon end, which gets a little bit different sound on the, the drums, and you can also get a good rim shot sound. That is not a retractable brush. Instead of the, the ring, the metal ring on the end of it, that brush has a metal bead, uh, it's just kind of like a quarter inch little uh, metal bead that you can get some cool cymbal effects with and everything. So uh, before you, you know, get into brushes heavily, make sure that you've got a set that uh, feel good for you, that are comfortable and um, are going to enable you to get the sounds out of the brushes and the drums that you want to get. So once you've got a good set of brushes, uh, the first basic brush pattern that most people learn and that you'll see a lot of drummers play uh, involves two different techniques on each hand. And by the way, I play uh, traditional grip usually when, I, when I'm playing brushes. If you play match grip and you're comfortable with that, then uh, don't, don't change on, on my account, but I'm just more comfortable with traditional grip. So for this first pattern, the left hand is just gonna make circles. And the right hand is gonna play the swing pattern that we all know and love. They're operating pretty much on different planes. They don't get each, in each other's way. They don't cross uh, any of that. So that's a good place to start. Uh, when you're playing that pattern, make sure that you're playing your circle motion in time. You want to hit the same spot on the head on every quarter note. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And uh, for the swing pattern, I really try to emulate what I would do if I was holding a stick playing a ride cymbal. A little emphasis on two and four, make it swing a little harder. Another pattern that uh, Ed Thigpen devised involves uh, this, the left hand not doing circles, but actually traveling laterally across the head from side to side on the quarter note pulse. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The right hand on two and four is going to cross over the left hand, um, so it'll play one, two, and three, four. So that's another pattern you can work on. Um, the pattern that I've devised sort of for myself, um, and if you talk to most drummers about their brush technique, I don't think any drummer has a, a, a single source that they drew all of their brush information from. It's, it's really a pick and choose kind of thing. You can take a little bit from that recording and a little bit from that video and a little bit from this guy you saw play one time. And uh, so it's, it's really a kind of a melting pot of, of techniques. Um, the pattern that I've kind of developed for myself um, doesn't involve any crossing or kind of independent motion. The, the brushes travel around each other and they each kind of make a half circle and they'll travel around each other in, I guess, kind of a, a yin-yang sort of pattern. Um, and I usually start on the downbeat on one, uh, 
one and three will be down here with right under left, and two and four, the backbeat, will be right over left. And the cool thing about that pattern is that I can play the swing pattern all with my right hand like I just did, or I can break it up between the hands and play some accents with the left hand. So uh, that's something to work on. It's, it's, uh, just, it's independent motion, but they're still working in tandem. Um, another concept that... Uh, you'll have to use on brushes is playing in four versus playing in two. Uh, and playing in four refers to the walking bass line, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, where they're playing on all the quarter notes. So for that, uh, you're going to want to do like a four on the floor with your bass drum. And for that, I usually keep the brushes on the head at all times. Um, and there are those drummers that say you should, no matter what you're playing, you should keep the at least one brush on the head at all times. Um, but I don't really agree with that, especially when I'm playing in two, because if you're playing with two beats per bar, in other words, the bass player will be playing half notes instead of quarter notes. Uh, so instead of one, two, three, four, one, they'll be playing one, three, one, three. So for that kind of thing, I like to separate the two halves of the bar. and your bass drum can play half notes too. So there's a, a part in each measure where both brushes are off the head and that's okay with me. Um, the uh, other concept that you're gonna have to get used to is playing up-tempo swing with brushes. Up to now we've been doing kind of a medium tempo, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one quarter note equals 144 or so. Um, but if you get up above 200, up into the 300 range, um, these patterns are not going to work just because it's going to be traveling too fast and those patterns are too big. So one, uh, the first pattern that I sort of developed for myself for up-tempo playing is just right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right. And you can play it very staccato, taking the brushes off the head. Or you can play it a little bit more legato and leave the brushes on the head and get some of that drag sound. So the right hand is just banging out quarter notes and the left hand fills in the skip beat. If you get even faster than that, uh, I like to play the back beat with the left hand, two and four with the left hand, and fill in the skip beats with the right hand. So if we're talking about one, two, a one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Um, and if you get, if you're not comfortable with that, or if you get even faster than that, uh, a friend of mine actually devised his own technique, sort of as a joke, but it actually worked, um, where both hands will switch to traditional grip. The right hand will play one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. He's actually turning his hand over. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. And the left hand will fill in the skip beats. One, two, one, two, three, four. So again, he kind of thought of it as a joke, but it actually works. And if it works, then uh, why, <laughs> why joke about it? Um, there are some other patterns, or some other styles, rather, that you can play with brushes. It's not just confined to swing. Uh, when I play a bossa nova tune, I like to get out the brushes, and instead of playing swing eighth notes, we'll use this same kind of over-under technique, uh, but instead of playing swing eighth notes, we'll play straight eighth notes. So instead of straighten them out. You can also just kind of play straight eighth notes alternating, dragging the brushes. And if you add the bass drum pattern and the hi-hat pattern, it makes a nice little samba pattern, or a nice little bossa nova pattern. You can play accents.
play a little partito alto rhythm. You can also, as I just mentioned, you can play a samba pattern. When I play samba with brushes, I don't usually leave the brushes on the head. It's more of a staccato stroke. Uh, another style that's typically played with brushes is the ballad. Uh, and again, you can use that same over-under technique. It's going to be slowed down quite a bit, so it'll take a little more control and a little more practice just to train your muscles to move smoothly when they're moving that slowly. Um, but the advantage to that is that you can use a lot more surface area on the head. Um, when you're playing in a swing style, it, just by nature of the tempo, you don't have a whole lot of room to work with. But when you get to a slow tempo and you're playing a ballad, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. You can really use a lot more surface area. Um, and you can really imply time without even using bass drum or hi-hat, as I just did there. And it's a technique that you should practice one hand at a time, where you kind of just give the brush a little flick into the head in the middle of the drag. So you can create a pulse. One and two and three and four and one. So there's, those are a few other styles that you can play with the brushes. Um, another problem that I ran into when I was trying to get better at the brushes was switching between brushes and sticks because a lot of times, you know, especially if I'm playing with a singer, I'll play the first couple of choruses with brushes, and then when we get into the solo section, I'll want to switch to sticks. So how do you do this smoothly? Where do they come from? Where do they go? Where do you put them? Um, do you do it both at, a, both at the same time or one hand at a time? And the technique that I've adopted is something that I stole from Jeff Hamilton. Um, some, some drummers, you know, will keep their sticks on the floor tom there. They'll put them down on the bass drum. They'll kind of rest on the lugs. Um, but where I saw Jeff Hamilton play one time, and he had his sticks under his left thigh, between his thigh and the throne. Um, and, you know, it looks a little bit X-rated, but when you're behind the kit, nobody cares. Um, so basically, he and I switch one hand at a time, uh, and you can, where I put my brushes when I'm not playing them is on the outside edge of the floor tom and on the outside edge of the snare drum. If you have your snare drum and your tom tilted quite a bit, if, they're, if they've got a slant to them, that might not work so well. But if you've got them pretty flat like I do, and especially if you've got a brush with rubber handles, um, they'll usually stay put pretty well. So... Um, like I said, I'd, I'll usually, if I'm with brushes, I'll switch, the, switch out the right hand first so that I can get my ride cymbal pattern going, then switch out the left hand so that I can join in with the snare drum, and I'll show you how that works. I'll play eight bars of uh, swing time with the brushes and then switch to sticks. One, two, three, four. So as you can see, when I was switching back two brushes from sticks, I went with the left hand first so that I could kind of hit the downbeat of the new phrase with the stick on the cymbal and then get the, the uh, snare texture going with the left hand, drop the right stick or drop the right stick down here, pick up your brush, and then your right hand is ready to go. So um, I found that really, really useful uh, in making smooth transitions. I, I really don't like it when drummers you know, take four bars and they'll keep their feet going and they'll have a table down here or something and... You know, it'll take them like four bars to make the switch, and meanwhile, there's no music happening. So I like to make that transition as quick and as seamless as I possibly can. Um, the other thing I'd like to talk about is uh, there's a, a few little tricks and gimmicks that you can use with brushes. You know, these sounds that you can't get with sticks um, just because you're dealing with, you know, wire instead of wood. Um, the first one I like to use is if you get your index finger kind of up on the, the shaft of the brush, you can get this flutter technique on the snare drum or any drum, really. 
You can use that in fills, you can use that in solos, you can do it on different drums. So that's something fun to do. You can also get this kind of rim shot. That's fun to use in a solo. Um, so those are some you know, fun things that you can mess around with. Don't take them out in public until you <laughs> get real comfortable with them. Um, and the, the last piece of advice I want to give you for uh, uh, playing brushes is to really practice your rudiments. This is something that, that Jeff Hamilton also recommends, and this is where I got the idea. Um, get out your rudiment sheet and, and play, especially the rudiments that you're comfortable with, that you like using. Really get proficient with uh, brushes because it's going to take a little more technique and a little different technique to get a clear articulation on those rudiments. So start with something simple like paradiddles. And you can play those with regular strokes coming up off the head or you can use a drag stroke. Uh, another one I use frequently is roughs, three stroke roughs. I use that quite a bit in, in fills. Um, another one is Radom accused, or, or you start with drags and then work some Radom accused. Really, it's going to take a, quite a bit of technique to get that double stroke in the drag clear. And speaking of double strokes, you can play a double stroke exercise. If you've ever been in drumline, you, you play the, the mama, daddy, hugga, dugga, whatever you call it in, in your town, which is just the four sixteenth notes of, six, uh, of single strokes and four sixteenth notes of double strokes. That's something I use frequently as well in, in fills and solos. So, uh, there are some basic uh, starting points that you can use uh, when you're getting into brushes. I hope it's been helpful. I'd like to thank OnlineDrummer.com for inviting me to do this. I'd also like to thank uh, Bosphorus Symbols for making these wonderful symbols uh, and for allowing me to endorse them. So, uh, I will see you next time, and thanks a lot.